Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this one, it is finally time to show you all the methods that I've been using in order to reach level 220. As you can see on the left, I'm currently still level 219. While I'm going to cover the methods that I used, I also want to get that last bit of XP myself. So by the time that this video ends, I should be hitting level 220. If you're wondering why I'm going on and on about that number, it's because when you go over to the battle pass, and then scroll over all the way to the right, you can see that there are specific skin styles that you unlock when reaching a certain level, and the hollow foil for Ryan for Wolverine you unlock at level 220, and that's simultaneously going to be the last thing that you can unlock in this battle pass. Or at least for now, maybe they'll add more stuff later, but for now this is as far as you can go with, in terms of unlocking stuff. I'm going to put some timestamps in the description so that you can quickly navigate to the method that I'm going to be covering, and if you want to come back to this video at a later time, it'll be easier for you to actually check the part that you need. Before we jump into the methods, there's one last thing that I want to mention, and that's that I bought several tiers for the Battle Pass this season. Only reason why I did that is because I wanted to release the Awakening Challenge guys for you guys. And if I would have grinded the first 100 levels, it would have taken too much time before I could publish them. So yeah, usually I don't buy tiers, but whenever there are specific challenges that you need a specific level for, then obviously I'm going to buy the tiers so that I can publish those guides. Keep in mind that this season is set to end on November 30th, so that means that you still have about 8 weeks left in order to reach level 220. Anyway, with all of that being said, let's jump into the methods. The first method that I want to cover are the quick challenges. You can find an overview here on the left, and the best part about this is that every day they refresh. So that means that every single day you're going to get 5 different quick challenges, each worth 10,000 XP. And then if you complete all of them, which is going to be 50,000 XP, it should translate to roughly one level. Two of my favorite things about these quick challenges is that if you fail to complete either one of them, they're going to transform into supercharged XP on the next day. Unfortunately, this effect is not permanent, so what it means is that if you fail to complete one quick challenge for 10,000 XP, you'll have supercharged XP for 10,000 XP. And for example, if you fail to complete all of your quick challenges, then they're all going into your supercharge meter, and then you can just keep eliminating players, opening chests or ammo boxes, but all of that is going to have the 3.5 times multiplier of your supercharge. This is extremely useful to know for days that you're unable to play a lot, or when you quickly want to sign in, check the item shop, but then you need to go and do other stuff. So that's the first thing. The second thing, is that these quick challenges are never ending. Whenever you complete the first five, they're all going to become new challenges and this will keep going on indefinitely. The only catch is that until the next day, the next set of quick challenges will only be for 1000 XP. There is a huge variety of quick challenges available. You have stuff like deal damage with a specific type of weapon, uh, fish at fishing spots, harvest a specific type of building material, and then also more simpler ones such as ride a zip line or upgrade a weapon, stuff like that. The only one that I find a bit annoying is dealing damage with an explosive weapon. The easiest way to fix this is by going into solo duels or squads, landing near a henchman and then throwing a grenade at them. It also works if you need to deal damage with a specific weapon. Just find yourself a henchman or a Stark robot or whatever. And if you damage those, then it's also going to count for a quick challenge. The second method that I used a lot are the punch cards that we have available this season. This is not going to be a punch card guide. I have different videos on my channel that like give you very specific details on how to complete them. So I'll link it in the description. This part is just simply to recommend which ones you should complete and which ones you should leave for later because they're of no added value for now. Every single stamp on your punch card gives 15,000 XP and it's nice because there are some punch cards that have like four or five stamps available and that means that every single one of those stamps is gonna be 15,000 XP. Starting off on the left side, we have a bunch of Marvel punch cards. I would say get like the first three stamps for every one of them. I played a lot of the Marvel game modes, so I completed most of them. The only one that's a bit of an exception is Galactus Hungers. If I recall correctly, for the second stamp you need to destroy five Gorgers. I think that's very doable, but then after that it starts to become a lot. Stark deck is really easy to complete because you can also get this in solo duos and squads. And the best thing about this is that whenever you eliminate someone with Iron Man's mythic power-ups, then you also get a stamp or you also get eliminations that count towards your explosive stamps. Now that I'm going over it, I'm realizing actually how many Marvel punch cards we have. Faster than light is very easy to complete. You should be able to do this in three or four games. Uh, it all depends on how fast you can find the board, of course. But there's a separate video on my channel, also in the description. Check that one out because this is going to be an easy 60 thousand xp champion should be relatively easy depending on your skill level then shared glory is literally winning a match with a friend this can also be team rumble so if you're not very good at the game but you still want to grind then grab a friend jump into team rumble and you should be getting a free 15,000 xp 
For Thriving, maybe you get like the first two or three stamps. And then the same goes for Chop Chop. I think that the third stamp at a thousand trees destroyed is already a lot, but the first two are doable. I think that most people will already have nest egg unlocked. For this one, you just need to hold 999 of each building resource. And if you just play Theme Rumble and destroy a lot of objects, you should already have that. Then there's a whole bunch of punch cards that involve chests, uh, supply llamas, forged items and building materials get like the first three or four stamps if you continue beyond that then you're gonna need to farm a whole lot of them and in my opinion that's a waste of time i will get back to wackadone later because the quinjet patrol sites are part of a different strategy that i have for getting a lot of xp then there's free falling very easy to complete never stood a chance and power you'll most likely get while just playing the game i wouldn't recommend farming these insolent fools and robot army they don't go very fast so i wouldn't bother going beyond the second stamp after that we have a bunch of punch cards that involve a specific type of weapon also for this one same advice go for the first three stamps and beyond that you'll either get it while playing but i don't think it's worth your time to specifically grind for them same thing goes for the revive and reboot ones for fishy, I'm gonna leave this to you, like if you want the satisfaction of having your fishing collection completed, then you need to go for this one. But do keep in mind that the punch card only gives you 15,000 XP. I will get back to snag and angling, but these ones are pretty doable. They don't require that much to be completed fully, so I recommend going for these. Rainbow Arsenal is a yes, just grab a grey weapon, get, a, get yourself a bunch of materials and then upgrade it all the way to legendary. Working out the kings, waste of time, you'll get it while playing, but don't grind for it. Now for something different is gonna be a piece of cake. This is basically a free 15,000 XP. On fire, I have mixed feelings about. This depends on luck, it depends on skill, but if you do manage to complete it, you're gonna get 75,000 XP, which is awesome. First of all, you will most likely get while playing Team Rumble. Legacies, you can just get them while playing the game. And then eventually, if you wanna complete it, then you can look up a specific guide on what the different legacies are and which ones of those are the easiest. Then we have Punchy, which is awesome because this punch card basically translates to hey, so I see you're grinding XP, let me give you some more XP for grinding XP, which is really useful. For efficient, you need to complete quick challenges. And as I just mentioned in method number one, this is one of the things that you want to do in order to level up quickly. For hero, you get some free XP once you reach level 100. I guess it's a nice incentive to keep on grinding. Then for overachiever, don't bother going for this one. You'll either get it while playing the game, but it's not that much added value. Now for consistent you need to complete weekly challenges and for the XP coins you need to collect XP coins. I recommend going for these punch cards but not for the sake of getting the stamps purely because completing weekly challenges gives you a lot of XP and so do the XP coins but I'll get back to this later in the video. Precision and power you should have this by now if you don't just eliminate a player with a Stark Industry Rifle and you'll easily get 15,000 XP. I would not recommend going for a hot seat, either get this while playing but don't bother grinding for it because I think it's a waste of time if you don't already have it. Also it may sound a bit controversial while I'm the one that already unlocked it but the main reason why I'm saying that is because it took me quite some time to complete them and I'm trying to give you guys the fastest method so once you reach your goal after that you should go for these punch cards. Well behaved Q&A and that's handy are very very easy and then wheelman and rideshare Save those for later or either get them while playing, but don't bother grinding for them because you're gonna be wasting time. In my opinion, punch cards help me the most with grinding to level 220. There are so many of them and there are so many different stamps. I really enjoyed completing some of them and the rewards you get is just amazing. It is time to move on to method number three. This one is going to be the weekly challenges and XP coins. Every week, I think we're gonna have at least 10 guaranteed weeks. We'll get seven different challenges. Uh, six of them will be worth 25,000 XP. And then the seventh one, it's gonna be more difficult. Uh, they also recommend doing this with more players, but that challenge is going to be worth 50,000 XP. I make challenge guides every single week. So if there's a specific one you're stuck with, or if you just wanna see how it's completed, just check out my recent videos and you should be able to figure out what to do and get yourself some nice XP. The rest of the challenges for this season are not available yet. Tomorrow, we're gonna enter week six. So once the challenges go live, you can start completing them. Next to the challenges, what we also get every week are a bunch of XP coins. Starting from the first week, we only got purple, blue, and green XP coins. But then from week three onwards, we also got an extra gold one, which is basically like, hey, just go to this specific spot on the map, collect this coin and get a bunch of XP. 
Again, like the challenges. If you need help with figuring out where the XP coins are, check out my recent videos. I publish this every Thursday. I don't know from the top of my head how much XP everything gives in total, but I'll make sure that during the editing process, I'll include some text on the screen where you can actually see how much everything is worth and how much XP you'll have gained uh, after week 10, for example. For method number four, we're going to jump into a match. Now this tactic you can use in solos, duos and squads. Fortunately, it doesn't work in Team Rumble because you don't have the Stark robots there. And they're quite essential for what I'm about to show you. Every match there will be four Quinjet patrol sites. They're indicated by the blue slash purple smoke. And I recommend going to the one that is the furthest away. So for example, if the battle bus goes uh, via this line, then Take this one, because your chances of meeting people that will annoy you or will interfere with your XP grind, they are minimal. It looks like we don't have any enemies that landed here, so this part is always a little bit tricky. You need to make sure that you land on a weapon. Uh, okay, we had a random guy that just came to sacrifice himself. But yeah, go ahead and start with eliminating the robots. Get yourself some loot from here. Usually there are slur potions in here. Recommend immediately using them, because if you take a lucky shot from the Stark robots, that is going to uh, interfere with your plans. Alternatively, if you think this is too much risk, you can also land a bit further away uh, before you actually come over here. So you can grab yourself some weapons, maybe some healing items, and then start eliminating the Stark robots. Okay, so I think I only got some XP for opening the chest and eliminating that player. But after you've done that, after you've done your prep, start eliminating those robots, which all give you about 80 XP. Uh, so that's going to be five of them. And then shoot the drones, because those give you 145 XP. And this is quite nice. That's two, that's three. There should be a fourth one. I kind of lost him. Oh, there he is. Now here's the interesting part about this. The XP that you just saw, it wasn't a whole lot. But I would alternate between Team Rumble and between this method, since you can only do it in solo duos and squads. The main reason for that is that sometimes you have quick challenges, such as damaging someone with explosives or eliminating Stark robots. And it's just much easier if you land at this Quinjet patrol site, eliminate those robots, also get some XP from the drones and simultaneously complete your quick challenge because I definitely think Team Rumble is better for grinding XP. But if you get stuck with your quick challenges, then there's no use in staying with Team Rumble. The goal here is to optimize the amount of XP that you get per minute or per 10 minutes, not to get stuck in some boring endless cycle of opening chests. There is one last thing about the Quinjet patrol sites that I quickly want to point out. Uh, I don't know if it's a bug in the game or if it's something else, but Quinjet patrol Foxtrot 7, which is right here on the map, and then there's another one, the one next to Steam Meat Stacks. I don't know what the number of that one is, but whenever you land there, uh, for some reason you keep getting the 1000 XP for discovering a landmark. So if there's a Quinjet here, go over there and it's basically a free 1000 XP for every time you land there just for setting foot on the ground. Now you may be thinking, what if I land there every single game and just get the 1000 XP and leave? Well, I really wouldn't recommend exploiting glitches. It's basically just an extra for when you go for a Quinjet patrol site. But besides that, there isn't much use to it. Also, starting up a game, landing there and then leaving the game again, it's not very time efficient. Also, since it's only a thousand XP. Now, I am going to stay in this game a little bit longer because then I'll complete my quick challenge for replacing top 10 in solo duos or squads. And after that, I'm going to jump into the next method. Oh, what? Really? That was a bit unexpected. I just finished the game and I was like, huh, I'll probably level up in the next one. I don't know how I suddenly got so much XP. Probably completed two challenges? What happened there? Huh, that was weird. I may have slightly miscalculated my XP gain uh, during that match, but there we go, level 220, and I unlocked the hollow foil style for Wolverine. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, I, I like this. You unlock the style for an item that you do not yet own. Well, we'll see about that tomorrow, won't we? Just gonna go ahead and claim this. Ah, I know what happened. I thought I only completed one of the quick challenges for 10,000 XP, but I apparently completed two of them. Alright you guys, time for the next method. This is going to be a combination of loot challenges and a loot path in Team Rumble. So there are a couple different locations where you can do it. The weather station is definitely my favorite and I'll show you uh, why. I hope that this guy is not going to interfere with that. It's probably going to go for the, for the Quinjet. First thing you want to do is land here, grab yourself this chest. Then you're going to go down here, get yourself another chest. Basically this method is to open a whole bunch of chests and ammo crates uh, within a single match. 
and that way you're gonna gather a bunch of XP. So yeah, he's actually gonna go over there, which is good because he's not gonna steal all of my chest. There is one here, there is another one here. The main reason why I would recommend doing this in Team Rumble is because the chests here, they're not affected by the, the nerf chest spawn rate. So in here, every chest will always be there 100% of the time. After you're done with the small house and the chests outside, you're gonna come over here. I usually don't bother picking up the loot. I just literally open the boxes, get the XP, and then move on to the next one. Another chest right here. After I'm done with this part, I'm gonna show you the other locations on the map where you can do this. Oh, he actually looted. There's supposedly a chest right there, but he already picked that one up. And we're gonna go up here, and there is a last one that you can find here. Now, if that guy wouldn't have been here, there's also a possibility to eliminate the Stark supply drones, which you can see down there. I think he already got rid of most of them, so I'm not gonna bother with that. But after you pick up this last chest right here, you're going to want to go to Camp Cod. If you get some slurp uh, or chuck splashes from any of the chests there or just see them lying around, then I would recommend picking them up because for a little bit of your loot path, you're going to be stuck in the storm because usually the circle doesn't end up here and it's a bit of a waste if you uh, die due to the storm while you're still not finished opening chests. So again, this is my personal loot path. I'm showing you how I do it. Maybe there's a more optimized route this is the one that I discovered for myself and it works pretty well. There is a chest right here and then you have an ammo crate or uh, an ammo box right here. Usually I make sure to grab at least one blue weapon so that I can quickly upgrade that to the next rarity. Since you already start off with mats and you get a bunch of mats from the chest that you open, you may as well get a bit of extra XP by doing this. And again, I'm not just doing this for the chest. I usually complete my quick challenges here as well. So as you saw, I already got the one for collecting building materials and then there's also one for weak spots which I can uh, do if I want. There are a bunch of fishing spots here, I recommend getting those. I'm not going to show that now because it's a bit of a waste of time but if you have a harpoon gun it's going to be done in no time. After you're done here you're going to go up here and then there is maybe an ammo box right here. Yep, this one doesn't always spawn, I don't know what's up with that. The chests, they are 100% accurate. But the ammo boxes, they are not. They're gonna come over here. My health is running out rapidly, so I need to figure out a way to, uh, to restore that a bit. There's a campfire right there. You could potentially get that. I'm kind of hoping for some chuck splashes or medkit. Well, let me take this just so that I can continue showing uh, my loot path. Right, and then you're gonna build yourself a nice little ramp here. Go over to these tables, which have a bunch of ammo boxes. I know it doesn't seem like a lot of XP, but if you keep doing this and if you just open up everything, it's gonna be around three to 4,000 XP every single match. And this loop path, it takes you about five minutes. I would say that's worth it. So you come over here, you get yourself some of the first items. You literally just pick them up. And if you want, since you're already covered in the storm, you can also take them because it's going to help you with completing the punch card for that. Uh, I think it's scrounging for grub. There's one last chest over here, loot that one. And this is where I'm usually done. If you want, you can also go over to that house. But when I've done this chest, I'm like, yeah, you know, I've pretty much seen it. I'm ready to go back to the circle and start eliminating people. Now, one thing you could do is just loot all of these chests, uh, use the fishing spots and then leave the game and repeat. I don't like to do that. This next part is a bit dependent on your skill level. so. I usually make around 20 to 25 eliminations in a Team Rumble match. And the main reason for that is that people just leave a lot. And that way you're going to be stuck against 8 or 9 opponents. And you know, I don't know what my teammates are usually doing, but there is a lot of possibility for me to get a lot of eliminations. There we go. I also just like to alternate between eliminating people and opening chests, because if all I'm going to be doing is opening chests, it's gonna be extremely boring and I, uh, I want to prevent that. Now I've just shown you one specific loot spot on the map. There are several. Uh, it also depends on where your version of the battle bus is going. So if it's going this way, go for Sweaty Sands. If it's going anywhere this way, then I recommend Steamy Stacks because that's just awesome. And then whenever you're done looting here, you can take one of the, the vents or the Steamy Stacks and quickly land here to get yourself XP from the Quinjet Patrol side. And then the last one that I like to use, which is my favorite, is the one over here. So you first loot the weather station, you can possibly shoot down the Stark Supply Drones, 
and then continue all the way over here at Camp Cod. I do really recommend that whenever you're going for those loop paths or the Quinta patrol sites in solo duos or squads, make sure to complete your quick challenges because otherwise you're gonna miss out on a lot of free XP or well free. You do need to do something for it, but it's a lot of missed XP. So make sure to do both your quick challenges and open literally everything that you see. Another added benefit of that is that you also work on your punch card. So whenever you looted an X amount of chests or open an X amount of llamas, you're going to be getting 15,000 XP for completing a punch card, which is completely awesome. Now that's all I had to say about the loop paths in Theme Rumble. There's one last method that I want to show you. For this one, you need to go into creative, press play, and then go into create. And once you get into creative, well, that's basically it. There's nothing else that you have to do here. This method is for the AFK players. If you need to do homework, if you need to do chores around the house, leave your device on whether you play on PC, Xbox, uh, PS4, mobile, or Switch. Sit here in creative, and for every 15 minutes that you are in creative, you will get, um, I think it's about 6,000 XP. So literally, if you need to do something else and you still wanna farm XP, Go inside the creative hub instead of staying in the battle lobby and just get XP that way. That is going to be it for this video, guys. I hope my tips help you. I hope that you will be able to level up quickly because of this, because I would like for everyone to uh, reach level 220 and get the hollow foil for Wolverine. If there are any new methods that I discover or any new game modes that get released, which grant you a whole bunch of XP, I'll make sure to publish a video uh, while covering that. But for now, these are the best methods that worked for me, that helped me reach level 220, and I hope they will do the same for you. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything that I may have missed, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below so that you can help other people that watch this video. But for now, that's going to be it for me. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace!